Hey Hackermans, I'm Anonymous, and you're watching me prove a point. Terastalizing is absolutely broken. This may be Game Freak's least balanced gimmick yet, and I'm here to teach you kids how to abuse it like it's a- I probably shouldn't make that joke. For those of you out of the loop, the community has been dissecting trailers and even a couple early access builds of Scarlet and Violet to get a clearer picture of how Terra works. To my understanding, its basic functionality is this. 1. The Pokémon's type is overwritten by a specific Terra type, which any Pokémon can have any of. 2. The Pokémon gains Stab in its new type while retaining its original Stab, and the move Terra Blast becomes the user's Terra type instead of its default normal. 3. If a Pokémon's Terra type is the same as one of its original types, it deals double damage when using moves of that type. This is another compounding multiplier that stacks with stab rather than functioning like adaptability does. So essentially, a Pokemon that, terra that terras into its own type does triple damage. Hard to grasp? Well, don't fret, I have a freakish amount of game knowledge for nothing. Here's an example. A Tyranitar has a Terra type of water. It has a choice of running either Aqua Tail or Terra Blast. Since its attack is higher than its special attack, Terra Blast functions as a physical move. Either are valid choices, since Aqua Tail is a little stronger, but Terra Blast is 100% accurate. Before terrestrializing in battle, Terra Blast is just an 80 base power normal move, so not very useful for Titar. After terrestrializing, Titar is pure water type. It's no longer weak to fighting and resists water. However, on top of its new water stab, Crunch and Stone Edge are still stab boosted. That's about it. And already, an experienced player can see how fundamentally fucking broken this is. In my perspective, this most benefits strong Pokemon that already have very good types and very strong stab, since they can use the double damage boost to hit like a reversing ambulance. Let's get into these game-breaking sets. My first thought upon seeing the triple stab boost was Terra Water Kyogre. This set would work well in both singles and doubles, but I can see it especially shredding in a VGC format. A Terra boosted Water Spout has a very good role to kill Toxapex, Amoongus, and Ferrothorn after a little entry hazard chip damage. This damage output is just unmatched. Nothing can deal these kinds of hits. In order to deal with it, a Water Absorb Mon or especially bulky 4x resist might be a necessity. Even Ludicolo gets 2 code if the set is wrong. Also, all my calcs were done in doubles, so in singles, without the spread move power penalty, there is no surviving this. Belly Bolt may end up being a terrifying Trick Room Sweeper. It looks pretty slow, and if Electromorphosis works like how I think it does, its electric moves have potential for insane power as well. Pair it with Trick Room Runarigus, EV them to make sure Runarigus is a little bit slower, give Runarigus Round or another low power move, and hit Terra Electric Belly Bolt with it for insanely boosted electric moves. I don't know Belly Bolt stats, so I can't calc anything, but from the triple Terra boost and the probably double Electromorphosis boost, I do know that it's one hell of a discharge. Between Stab and Electromorphosis, you may not even need the Terra boost, and instead could opt out for a Terra Ice or Water to deal with ground types. That's part of the terrifying flexibility of Terra. A Belly Bolt could stay as Electric type and go for insanely strong Electric hits, but there's always the possibility of it being able to one-shot your Landorus for free out of nowhere. Azumarill's raw power is high enough between Belly Drum and Huge Power that a Stab Terra boost probably isn't necessary. This is where Terra's flexibility shines the most. It could be running Terra Blast with literally any Terra type and probably be fucking fine. Maybe it's fire to resist grass and hit them back hard. Maybe it's electric to teach Celesteela and Corviknight a lesson. Maybe it's dark for the defensive typing and only weaknesses to things that get eaten up by a play rough. Maybe you opt for fighting since you already have a strong fighting stab. The main thing making this set so insanely good is the fact that you don't know. A Terra Dark Assumeril could be easy to deal with, all you need is a superpower Rillaboom but you don't know if it's dark, and you could be sending Rillaboom out against some psycho using Terra Bug Azumarill to eat fighting moves and hit grass types. It's a lot like Z-moves in that regard, but instead of having a generally idea of what could randomly one-shot what out of nowhere, you have zero fucking clue. This doesn't really count as a set, but Mew is still broken enough for me to mention. 
since it can learn literally any move that's ever been a TM or move tutor, it can be any type in the game and be just fucking fine. Terra brings Mew's flexibility to a level above any other Pokemon, since it has on-demand stab of any high-power move of any type. Kurtana could be broken in a few different ways, but off the top of my head, I think the best could be Rock. Between its stabs and coverage, there's not much it can't hit, but fire and flying types do come to mind. Charizard walls it, so does Corviknight, Landorus deals with it easily, and anything with a fire move instantly evaporates it. However, since Rock resists fire, things that carry a fire move to deal with Kartana can no longer rely on it, and mons like Charizard, Torkoal, and Thunderous have to contend with the possibility of a rock move with higher power and accuracy than Rock Slide in the almighty Terra Blast heading their way. Water is also a good option, although it may not be as good as Rock because of Drought. The last entry on the busted as shit squad for today is Volcarona. You can imagine why, seeing as how Volcarona was considerably stronger with hidden power and Z-moves in effect. There are a few good types Volcarona could use, all depending on the, what team it's on and what it's worried about. It could run Ice Terra Blast to deal with Landorus or her Poudon, Grass on Giga Drain or Terra Blast for water types like Azumarill, Psychic with Psychic to deal with some more niche counters, or Toxapex, or ground, or water if you're worried about getting shut down by fire types like Incineroar. As with previous Hidden Power and Z-Move sets, of, and a few of its partners in crime, this set's strength comes from unpredictability. Your opponent doesn't know which of their Pokémon can get randomly one shot out of the blue until they've either guessed correctly, or it's already too late. For Volcarona, I would recommend using it similarly to how I like using Mega Gyarados. Save its type change, for when it would be most impactful, rather than popping it before you need to. And, well, that's all for today. There are plenty of other Pokemon just waiting for you to break the game with them. These sets were really just to stimulate your imagination so you can think up your own overpowered bullshit. I do want this mechanic to be actually balanced, but a small, evil little part of me hopes it's horrifyingly busted and SV's entire competitive meta is an unprecedented shit show. Until next time, gamers.